Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm in Udon Thani, which is in the Isan region of Thailand. And this is one of the best cities for Isan food. And so today we are gonna go on a street food tour of Udon Thani. Uh, we're gonna, well, we're starting at the market. We're gonna meet up with Chef Noom from Samoy and Sons. Uh, we're gonna walk around the market. We might have some breakfast. Then we've got a special mid-morning lunch of La Bet, which is a duck salad restaurant that Chef Noom is gonna take us to. Uh, and then we'll definitely be eating some green papaya salad. So in this video, I'm gonna share all of this amazing Isan street food with you in Udon Thani. What is the name of the market here? This is Talat Tesaban Song. Talat Tesaban Song. Okay. So this is the central morning market in the city. Yes, absolutely. We actually like we have like um, two markets for like the morning markets. So one sits here, ah, and another okay. one's bigger, but it's like for the wholesale. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> Some more, some more, some more. It is a bustling morning market. This is where you can come to buy all of the ingredients, all of the Isan ingredients plus ingredients sourced from all over Thailand. It's very festive, it's very action-packed, uh, yet at the same time people are friendly, it's laid back. Uh, very, very cool market and it goes all the way down this alley. You can just see the... <laughs> Chef just bought a whole bag of Roselle. Dude, yeah. that's beautiful. I love Roselle, the juice, the... and the health benefits of Roselle too. Yeah. So this cool. one we uh, we chop it up and uh, we marinate. We preserve in the honey. Ah, okay. Yeah. So then okay, you can awesome. leave it there like for six months, cool. and then it be turned to the sauce. Ah, and then you like can, a jam. It turns like a jam. Yeah, almost, kind right? of. Roselle jam. Okay. Yeah. So, but this one is um, slowly become jam okay. without any um, adding like heat into it. Ah. Yeah. And it's so cool to be at the market with Chef Noom because he knows so many vendors and also he knows where to search out the most unique ingredients. Here's a lady with a lot of unique vegetables. Paknyep, I think it's called. That's almost like blue transparent in color. Mm, sour. Awesome. Oh, is it kind of like a tuai? What an awesome bar counter chef to chef to counter chef to table seating here at the market. Yeah, basically um, like the Vietnamese breakfast. Ah. So they do like kanom uh, chin style, but um, they finish it with uh, tomato juice. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That surprised yeah, me. The the broth, broth is yeah. so red. It's yes. based on tomato. Okay. And I think this is like. Uh, all of these places in Udon Thani that ah. they uh, still serving this. There's a lot of Vietnamese uh, influence in Udon Thani, right? Chai Kap. Okay, Kap. Yeah. I love this massive tile countertop too. Makes for a great seating. I'm just going to taste that tomato broth first. 
Oh wow, that's just straight up like tart, salty, and so tomato-y. So ultimate tomato. I think this is like a savory version of the Bloody Mary. Yeah, <laughs> it is like, it's tomato-y like a Bloody Mary, yeah. yeah. It is. And you can kind of mix it around. You've got the, the vegetables on the bottom and you've got the, the rice noodles as well. Mm. Oh, and with that mix of herbs, the crunch of the cabbage, I think it's um, some mint in there too. And I think I'll just season with a little bit of chili to get the morning going. Oh yeah, with that smoky heat of the chili and with that squeeze of lime acidity, awesome. And then you've got the, the meatballs in here too. And you can actually see on those meatballs, you can see that it's kind of a mix of minced pork probably, and then also mung bean noodles are just stuffed within it. Oh yeah, the sponginess of those meatballs and the way those mung beans are just, mung bean noodles are just like interwoven in between it makes it a nice spongy texture. The balance of those tart tomatoes, the mix of mint in there and that chili and lime juice, that is a perfect way to start the morning. To the smoky low grill of Isan at the market. We could smell this out. He's mostly grilling fish, but has some little packets, like some moks, um, of a variety of different things. But the main unique thing that they have, that they're serving here, is you can see it almost looks like a little, a little balloon. And what's it called, Jeff? Uh, well, it means like stuffing. Stuffing. Yeah, like a side wa. Like a side wa. So yeah. it's like a sausage frog. Yeah, but like the, frog. they debone uh, oh, the frog. They debone the frog. And it's just like use the, the frog meat, uh -huh. chop it up, mix it with some herbs, and put it back. Put it back in and then drill it. Yeah. What a dish. I mean, instead of intestines, they're using the frog body as the, the holder, as the balloon for the sausage, um, and then grilled. That is a beautiful thing. Oh, we gotta, we gotta try that. It's transparent. You can see all the herbs, all the spices in there. You can see the muscles yeah. of the, of the frog legs. Looks a little bit like a Popeye, Popeye frog. <laughs> you can split that open, and it's so full of herbs and ingredients. Mm. Oh wow. That's extraordinary. You taste all those herbs, the spices, the lemongrass. Chili and mostly like a lot, lot of lemongrass. Lemon a lot of lemongrass in there. That's a straight up lemongrass sausage frog. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. Light just went out. But, um, and then you've got like the skin natural casing of the frog, which also just, it just works. Mm, really good. <laughs> mm. And then when you're done with the stuffing with the sausage body, you have the drumsticks to eat the, the frog meat. What a just extraordinary to-go food. You could take that stuffed frog and just put it anywhere and take it to go, eat it on the road, eat it for lunch, take away. Just a perfect sausage packet. In this area of Isan, in Thailand, they do frog. It's some of the best frog that you'll have in the world, from uh, pounded frog chili dip, which is called bon kop, uh, to that frog sausage. That's a game changer. Okay, from here, uh, we are moving on to the next restaurant. Uh, Chef Noom is gonna take us to one of his favorite places for La Pet, which is uh, duck mixed salad.
We made it to the next place. It's called Bao La Pet. And it's right next to the hospital. Uh, this place specializes in lab, which is the chopped mixed meat salad. But I know that they use all organs, all parts of the duck here. Nothing goes to waste. What do you mean, Liana? They have a handwritten menu. Look at this, every page. And this is, the, this is the menu of the day? That's the gentleman, yeah. Ah. They have like the permanent menu, but like every day. Right right down. Down. Yeah, I think so. Like, no coffee, no Xerox. That's yeah. Big to tail duck dining. Yeah, absolutely. And then it's a check sheet so you can mark what you want, everything you want. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So chef ordered up a bunch of dishes. Looks absolutely amazing. And these are dishes that you, they're hard to find though, right? Yeah. Lots of these duck dishes. Um, these days, um, when you go to like the Isan vendor or like the Isan restaurant, it seems like they have almost everything for you. So you can order like from lab to some time. But this kind of place, this um, specialized on duck. Lots of Modern day Isan restaurants now, they have the full menu of yeah. all sorts of different things. Whereas this particular restaurant specializes in only duck, mm -hmm. all the way from the wings to the intestines to the beak to the blood. And then we also like the um, deep fried head, duck head. And too. the heads. Yeah. It's so coming. everything straight from beak to beak to uh, flippers. So what is this cup, chef? Uh, lap dang. They lap call dang. lap dang. But lap dang. Uh, some places they call ampet. Basically, it's so like that. It's like a uh, duck lab, like normally, but like they finish it like um, with a touch of blood. Not a touch, but you say they're like, they just uh, like. A scoop. A yeah. scoop of raw blood. Yeah. So the duck itself is actually cooked and minced up. Yeah. Mixed with spices, mixed with the uh, kapua, uh -huh. maybe some Chai of the, the lab spices. Yeah. And then it's finished with all the raw duck blood as uh -huh. the sauce. And there's organs in here too, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh wow, that's insane. And then surprisingly, the blood just gives you like sweetness. Yeah, you're right. The blood gives you sweetness and like a sauciness. Yeah, there's no such um, like it's not smell. Yeah, all. it's not bloody tasting at all. Mm -hmm. More like almost milky. Yeah. Milky in texture. The juiciness of it is insane. And then you can taste with all these herbs, right, that go together? Yeah. Oh, what, what were these, all these peanuts and, and so these you, are This is like the condiment, you eat oh. it with the duck. You put it on top or you eat it separately? You eat it separately. You eat it separately, yeah. okay. You can take peanuts, you can take chilies, mm -hmm. uh, all this condiment plate mm -hmm. goes together with the, the duck scoop in like that. Wow. <laughs> so good, yeah? Unbelievably good and refreshing and full of so many like earthy, Herbaceous spices. And then it also comes with this huge plate of uh, vegetables. Neem flowers to eggplant to cucumber to wing bean. And you can taste with all of these herbs as well. Okay, this one is the intestines, right, Chef? Yes. Intestines fried, stripped, cleaned, and fried and tangly. You can mm -hmm. see the tangliness of them. Now that's a snack food. Oh, it's so crispy. And you dip this into the jimchil. It's completely crispy. Mm. Almost feels like a crispy leather. The soup you, looks unique too, Chef. Yeah. Are those ovary eggs floating around in there? Yes. Yeah. So like the um, blood jelly. Blood jelly. Yeah, from duck. Especially like I think it's um, my first like like um, pork one or chicken one. I think duck one is. The oh, best. for for when it comes to blood jelly, yeah. duck is the best. Okay. Yeah. So this is like an all things organ soup. Yeah. Mm. Oh wow, I love the texture. It's more kind of less rich than an actual yolk, right? Mm -hmm. 
um, more kind of fluffy almost. And then the flavor of that broth, you just taste the duck skin, all of those organs, pure duck. Mm. A little bit of chili, a little bit of lime juice, a little bit of herbs like coriander in there. Maybe one more bite for the blood chili. Okay, I'll try the blood chili. <laughs> Oh wow. This soft, tender? Yeah. Very neutral tasting. Soft and tender like tofu almost. Okay. <laughs> so this is actually the the beak and the head yeah. chopped in half. So this is like um, one of my favorite carp. Test this first. Because to me That's it's like um, the bottom of the beak? No, yeah. It's just like um, the, the mouth of the, the duck. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, you can chew through the whole mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Here we go. This is the side of the head. So pull off the beak. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. It's completely chip crunchy. And that's a little bit. This part, there. it's like, to me, it's like um, umami bomb, it's, and it's popped in your mouth. Is this yeah. one the eye right here? This is the eye. Okay. Yes. I think it might be a first for me. Yeah. Duck eye. Yes. Cheers, man. <laughs> mm. Okay, I like it. <laughs> it's so juicy. Yeah. It's just a <clears throat> boom. Oh, yeah. what's that? Yeah. It just kind of erupts with juice, slightly rubbery mm -hmm. casing, which must be the, the eye socket. But that's oh, it's really good. We've got the the wings of the duck. Oh, these are beauties. Here's where you can really tell that it's a free range, just a good slender, running around duck. This one. Mm. Mm. Oh wow, yeah. The kind of chewy factor of it, because it's a yeah because it is a free-running duck. But the flavor that comes out, the saltiness, the crispiness. There's a lot of textures on this amazing meal. I think the best thing for me is the lob though. That lob with that cool blood is next level. That is the best of the best duck lob that you will have. And that raw blood, it sounds extreme, but the flavor is just so incredibly good and so cool, so refreshing, you would not even know it's raw blood. And then the vegetable plate, this one is called Lin Fa. Always love it. These long, slender pods. Um, that bitter, kind of jelly-ish texture. Without a doubt, one of the best duck meals I've ever had yeah. on another level. From here to continue on this Udon Thani street food tour, there's no way you can leave Udon Thani without eating some tam, green papaya salad. So we're on our way to a stall uh, that serves some of the best some tam in Udon Thani. The next restaurant that we're going to, and it's in a neighborhood community is called Somtam Benja. Uh, and it's just like at their home, in their backyard. What a spot. Actually, the entire restaurant is full, big wooden tables, and you actually have to come to the front of the restaurant to order uh, and to choose what you want.
ทานอาหารใช่ครับเ้าผัวเ้าเผ็ดเลยนะคะเผ็ดเผ็ดเผ็ดเผ็ค่ะแล้วก็เอาลาบหมูอีกของที่หนูเลยเอาลาบหมูแล้วก็เอาต้มต้มเนี้ยค่ะตำมวกตำเผ็ดค่ะ I just love the style here. It's slightly chaotic, a little bit hectic. Uh, you don't totally know what's going on, and yet the system is proven and it works. But they have all these different fried items and like uh, pork skins, fried fish, uh, and you, it's kind of like self-service. I see people just kind of grab what they want. So there's two giant mortars where they just slosh around ingredients: pound papaya, pound uh, long beans and cucumber. You can hear the sloshing of the fermented fish sauce, the batak. You can uh, hear just juices flopping around, the pounding of the mortar. It's almost cafeteria style, but you just order at the front, uh, you wait for your food, you grab it, you bring it to your table, and you go eat in their backyard, in their yard. Such a cool concept, such a cool place. And just the way that they mash those ingredients, even just using one hand, one arm, that muscle, that power, they are experts. They are excelling at green papaya salads. It's just literally non-stop pounding, sloshing, grinding, mixing, and then next salad, next salad. Oh, it's just a continuous flow like a rainstorm. And you could just tell they could make green papaya salad. They could mash up those ingredients with their eyes closed. Let me just tell you, this is the real deal. We got two main uh, pounded salads. We got the labmu, and we also got a bamboo shoot kind of stew uh, called soup no mai, which is also a very common Isan dish. But again, they have the full range. They have grilled chicken, they have fried chicken, they have uh, grilled fish, they have an assortment of different crispy meats that you can also order with your sampam. And they have probably a couple dozen different pounded salads that you can order as well. I'm gonna start with the first salad, which is the tam sua, which is, it's a pounded green papaya salad, but with uh, rice noodles kind of jean added to it. Wow, this is just, it's just bright, it's popping, and you can just already feel the flavor overdose. Oh, wow. Oh, I got some chili fumes up the, up the nostrils on that bite. That well-rounded flavor. That sharp chili spice. The heat. The umami. And actually in, in Isan it's called Nua, which is that well-rounded umami flavor. That has everything, all flavors, in one single bite that you could possibly want. From salty, to sweet, to sour, to fishy, to extra salty, to juicy, to chilies, to bitter, to astringent, and you immediately know why this place is so popular. That is just a world-class, unbelievable flavor salad. Mm. And now for the next salad, which is called tampa, which literally means pounded jungle salad. Um, this is a mixture of so many different things. And I think one of the reasons it's called a jungle salad is because of the wide variety of kind of wild ingredients as well as hoi cherry, which is, is a snail from the rice paddy fields. And that's a key ingredient in this salad, in this mixture. But there's also, I think some kind of pickled vegetables in here. Pickled mustard greens, there's tomatoes, there's lime juice, uh, there's herbs like uh, culantro, saku, coriander, there's even eggplant in here. Oh wow. And they are properly spicy too. That's some heat that will just start to burn as it goes down your throat. But the massive amount of textures in this dish, the hoi cherry, it's kind of like squid. You've got the juicy tomatoes, you've got the crunch of the papaya, the crispness of those pickled mustard greens or pickled stems or vegetables. It literally is a jungle in your mouth. And this one is their labmu, which is um, a mixture of skin and meat in a dressing. Mm. 
Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, like the gelatinous texture of that skin. I love that balance of citrus lime juice and the strong flavor of the herbs as well. And despite it being like half skin, it's very refreshing, feels very light. Okay, and then the last dish we got is the soup nal mai, which is the bamboo shoot soup. Uh, there's pumpkin in here, there's bamboo shoots. That should be a gravy, a sauce of yanang leaves, which kind of is sticky. Um, oh, there's even corn in here. Nice. After eating those chilies in the sometime, and then you take a bite of the hot soup, that hot broth kind of liquid. That just magnifies the chilies. Oh man, that burns so beautifully. Sweetness coming from corn and from pumpkin, and then just those amazingly, the texture, the snap of those bamboo shoots. Wow, there's some thumb here. It's just on the next level. I'm tearing. Oh, thank you for the water, my guy. Wow, what a flavor overdose. That was insane. It unlocks flavors in your mouth and taste buds on your tongue that you didn't even know existed. Another reason why they are so good is because they don't use any kind of a shredder for the green papaya. They still chop it up with a knife and slice it. Um, and that, to me, makes a huge difference uh, because you have those uneven chopped slices of papaya that offer so much of a like refreshing crunch rather than when it's shredded with a grater or something. It gives it, it you don't have the same texture in a sometime. My whole face is kind of on fire right now. I loved it. Finally, to complete this ultimate street food tour of Udon Thani, we are at a legendary beef noodle restaurant called Koi Tiao Pa Noi. And so Auntie Noi, she's known for her egg noodles, but she's especially known for her braised beef. those movements in her hand, her expertise, her years and decades of experience boiling those meatballs, flipping that soup broth, adding in the ingredients. <laughs> she is a legend of beef noodles in Udon and so friendly, so nice. But a little bit of unfortunate news is that because we've eaten at a few places before, we didn't make it to this uh, beef noodles until the end of the afternoon. And they're already fully out of the bami leung, the yellow egg noodles. So ah, don't get to try their egg noodles, which are the most famous noodle here. But so I had to get the senlek, which are the medium rice noodles, but they still have the braised beef. I got some meatballs um, and I got it nam tok, which is with blood. So what she does is she takes a spoon of cow blood, uh, puts it in the spoon, and then uh, just very lightly cooks that in the soup before going into your bowl. So that thickens it, that richens the broth, and that gives it that like murky signature richness and thickness. Oh, it smells so good. I have to say at this stage in the food tour, I'm not really that hungry, but as soon as I smell that broth, I'm ready to eat again. I'm gonna first taste the broth first uh, before I season, but one of the main things that you have to add here, uh, two additional seasonings that they have that are special. One is like a roasted chili jam, and one are charred peppers, charred roasted peppers. Uh, but let's just first taste that, that broth. Oh, that's just ultimate comfort soothing broth. The hint of a sweetness, those spices in there, the cinnamony garlic flavor. Oh, and then all those herbs, especially the culancho, uh, the sawtooth herb in there. Oh man, yeah, that is medicinal. 
Every bowl of noodles is served with this numpik pao. I believe it's a roasted chili jam. And I believe that most people would just add most of this to your noodles. We saw a couple people just scoop in the whole thing immediately. And you know they are experts. You know that they are, they are regulars here. Mm. It's not only chili, but kind of has a, a preserved taste to it, a fermented taste to it. I don't know if it's fermented beans that are added, fermented soybeans, but that is just a, like an umami booster. And additionally, there's the charred peppers as well. And I think this is more of a chasing strategy rather than putting them into your bowl. Oh yeah. It's smoky, charred, spicy. Oh man, that's wonderful. And you can just chase with that. And next up the vegetable plate, there's cabbage and there's basil. Basil also you can just put on top of your noodles. Kind of fold them in and let them wilt in the soup. And I'll also go ahead and add in a little bit of chili vinegar to balance the flavor. A quick stir again. Tenderness of that beef. Oh man. With that basil, with that vinegar. Mm. Chasing every bite with a roasted chili. Yeah, that is superb. Okay, and then we gotta try the, the meatballs. A little rehydrant. Just the bouncy, spongy quality. It's delicious. This is pure comfort, beef comfort in a bowl of noodles. And you are gonna wanna completely scrape out this bowl. That chili, that sour fermented taste to it. That beef, though, too, is just extraordinary. And any restaurant where I can chase every single bite with a roasted chili, I'm very happy. And so with that bowl of beef noodles, that completes this ultimate street food tour of Udon Thani. It's been an amazing day, incredibly delicious food. I wanna say a huge thank you to my friend, uh, Chef Noom. He has two restaurants in Udon Thani, Samoy and Sons and Mak Kang, both of which are excellent, amazing restaurants. I'll have his information in the description box below. Uh, but thank you to Chef Noom for taking us to the morning market and to that amazing, unbelievable La Pet restaurant. Udon Thani, it's, it's a mid sized city so there's plenty to do people are really friendly and there's lots of delicious food and I'll have all the information everywhere that we ate in this video in the description box below so you can check it all out and big thank you to you for watching this video please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it leave a comment below I'd love to hear from you and if you're not already subscribed click subscribe and also click the little bell icon that way you'll immediately get notified of the next video that I publish thanks again for watching and I will see you on the next video goodbye from Udon Thani